Hi guys, welcome back. So today we're out on the Columbia River. We're up above McNary Dam. Um, we're over on the Oregon side and we are fishing for steelhead today. And so we thought we'd take the chance to go over a little bit how we fish for steelhead and our rig and our setup. Um, so this is my dad, Dean. Uh, how long have you been fishing steelhead for? Uh, 20 years. So a lot of it right here. Long time in this area. Um, so he's gonna talk about today how we're, how we're rigging for steelhead. So why don't you go ahead and start from the rod down to the lure. Okay, so you, do. We, you can use a spinning rod or a bait cast rod. I like something eight and a half foot, medium, medium action, medium weight. This is a, one of my newer setups. It's a Fenwick nine and a half foot uh, spinning rod, but uh, I like 10 to 15 pound line. If I'm still, I use this, uh, line that floats so if I'm still fishing my line stays on top of the water but to start with this is a we're bobber fishing with a, a little weighted jig and shrimp and this is a slip bobber we use a slip bobber so we can set it out and you can change the depth you're fishing at and manage everything real well without having a whole bunch of leader out so to start with you run a bobber stopper up the line and they come in many different styles and types uh, lots of options. You basically slide the tube with the line over the over the line and pull the tube out and tighten it. So it, it's adjustable, easy to move. And I think I like these. I um, like the cloth ones. The cloth ones a lot better. This than, is these rubber ones. I feel like the rubber ones slide a little bit. You gotta have the right size line for the for what you're for using. The and these are yeah. you can just tighten. And next, I use a small bead to catch on to that bobber stopper if your beads too big around it'll go past it and the bobber the bobber will just keep going so I'll put a small bead that'll stop at the bobber and then a bigger bead and I like a bigger bead on top of my bobber so that when the when the weight goes down and the bobber stopper comes to the bobber you can from 10 20 feet away you can see this large bead come up on top of the bobber so, so it's you e know you're all the way you're easy to, it's easy to know you're not tangled and your line is however deep you set it so they're easy to see and if it if it does hang up up here, or if the line's coming up the bobber and the bobber's run down, you can tell because you have a bead that's easy to spot. So then you slide your uh, bobber, and there's many different slide bobbers. Any of them will work. I like these balsa ones that are bright, so you can see them. You like the taller ones? I kind of like the taller ones. A lot Stick of people. Out a, water a little higher. A lot of people use much smaller ones. Uh, I kind of like this size, but I have I have several different versions of this that. Uh, all work equally well. Then under that, I, I generally put a, a coned bead. The water goes by it better. A couple of small beads and then a weight. Now you can, uh, depending on the size of your bobber, how big or little it is you want to uh, get the, you might have to play with it a minute, get the right weight so the line, too, so the line say, will stay down. Sometimes too, they'll say on the bobber what size of weight you can use. Um, so look and see what kind of bobber you have, but you might have to change it a couple times to get the right weight so it doesn't just sink. For some reason, this doesn't have it, but I usually put a small rubber bead so the weight isn't banging on that uh, knot and stuff while, while you're doing your stuff. It, it protects the knot from the weight. Then a snap swivel. Then I'll use a monofilament line, the kind uh, uh, that's clear so it's harder to see in the water. You can make your leader as long as you want. Somewhere in this range works pretty good. What would you say that is? Probably 30 to 36 inches? Somewhere yeah, something there? like that. And I use a 10 pound, something a little, generally a little lighter than my, what's on my pole, but um, anything around 10 pounds works pretty good. The, the clearer stuff seems like, uh, I, li I like it a lot. We hand tie that onto the jig and there's multiple different jigs with different weights, colors of all kinds. You can see you've got yellow and red and pink and black and purple. I just whatever catches your eye. I see we seem to do best down here with black or black and purple or purple. Yeah, at least is what we this year we've done pretty good on black. Is there certain colors you don't do very good on or never done that great with pink on this river for some yeah. reason? I don't know why. So black or purple or something like that. But I will tell you I mostly use black and purple and or purple I okay. red occasionally. Yeah. But uh so uh, then you have your whatever size, whatever color you want, and then we'll buy this pre-dyed shrimp. I've got a couple of different versions. So 
something like that. Yeah, they hold just enough for a season, depending on how much you're fishing. The uh, then you put your your shrimp on, and I just uh, start it by running it down through the hood or the helmet, as you may, and then just so the tip sticks out a little bit. Just about like that, and it, it will stay on good, and the fish like them that way, and the hook is hood, hidden. Then we set, then we decide our depths. And uh, above McNary, would do between six and 15 feet deep. Uh, we're fishing with four poles today, so we probably got a nine, a 12, a 15, and we kind of vary the depths a little bit. Uh, and you can also see on your depth finder, if your fish hanging out at 10, maybe you want to do 10. Or the fish are hanging at 17, you want to go deeper. But, but we the rule do of thumb around 6 to 12, you're 6 to 12 to 15 in that range. Okay. And we move along, we put our electric trolling motor out, we move along between half a mile an hour and a mile an hour, and you just cruise around nice and slow, your lines stay taunt. And if you have a bite, there's no slack in the line to cause you trouble. The line isn't sinking like a lot of times when you're fishing from shore. And they will light this thing up pretty good. It's a lot of fun. Uh, if they miss it, if they pull on it and miss it, and the bobber comes up, just wait. Because they will come back and get it. If the shrimp is still on the hook, they will come back and get it almost every time. But generally, they, and also because you're moving and the lines are taut, they hook themselves a lot of times. So you're not having to stand up and you're not, set You don't the have hook to mess or... with it. You don't have to try to reel your slack up, and they hook themselves a lot of times. Okay. Are, is there a depth you find works most, we, most of the time? We mostly are around 12, 12. We okay. hover around 12, a little lower, a little deeper, a little shallower. As far as like depth of the water though? Is okay, so more at 30 or? Um, we have, we like to, I like to go stay in the 20 to 30 range down the shore, but I have, cro I have trolled across the river to go from the Washington side to the Oregon side and caught them right in the middle. So depth isn't a huge deal then? Not with these steelhead. Now, you like around 20 or 30? I like I like 20 to 30 along shore. Okay. But we've like I said, we've been out here in 80 feet and caught them. <laughs> so you just you just got to get it in front of them. They are a lot of fun. They'll they'll uh, jump out of the water and pull your line. They're, it's just a load of fun. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you and uh, stay safe, guys, and keep fishing.